Hello and welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. And today I'm on top of the uh, Paul John distillery and below me is the still house and behind me you can see uh, one of the warehouses. It's already a bit black um, and in the very far background you see the hills. And these hills are important for the John distillery because um, up in the hills it's raining and the water comes down into this valley and this water here has a really good quality. It's uh, the most reason for setting up a distillery. The most important things you have to look at is the quality of the water. And the John distillery here has um, an own well and this well um, has a really good water quality. They did analysis about the water and uh, most of the people had to move here to get the, the knowledge. And yeah, we will see today what the John, uh, John distillery is all about and how they make their whiskey. So behind me is the mold silo of the John distillery. And here you see huge stacks of mold. The mold comes from the northern regions of India near the um, Himalaya. The regions are called Uttar Pradesh and uh, Rajasthan. And then the people uh, fill it into these, uh, into these uh, holes and it goes up through the elevator to the sieving and the malt mill. First the malt goes up and on the top floor we have a magnetic system that removes, removes all the metal parts. Um, after that the malt comes in here and it is being sieved to take out all the stones. Stones would be very dangerous to um, have it in the malt mill because it could damage the malt mill. And there's another thing that uh, the John distillery is proud of is uh, that they remove uh, the husks from the malt before they uh, mill the, the malt. And this is done by a, a cyclone uh, separator. This is basically a, a big vacuum cleaner. So this sucks out all the loose bits from the malt. And these loose bits would um, increase the amount of husk in later in the, in the grist and um, th that would give the, the whiskey a flavor that is not favorable of the John distillery. So they suck out the husks and blow them out and collect them outside. The next step is the malt mill. Behind me is the malt mill and the John distillery has a two rolling pins malt mill and here the malt is crushed down to a coarse grist and this little um, lever here gives you uh, a sample of the quality control. So there you go. They have your, your husks, your flour and your grist. This here is the mash tun. It uh, contains, uh, in working conditions, it contains two tons of malted barley. And then during the, the washing, um, they take out uh, 12,000 of liter of that sweet juice they use for the fermentation. It's a very modern wash tun made of completely of stainless steel. And if you look inside the mash tun, you see that it's very clean. They, they really look at the cleanliness because they are a bit afraid of uh, vinegar bacteria. So they, they keep it clean and also they do three washings and they don't do a fourth washing where they recycle the, wa uh, the, the wash in, in the first uh, run of the next batch because they don't want to have cross-contamination. Cross so what they are looking for is they try to wash the, the sugars and the starches out and get it to the fermentation as soon as possible so only the yeast is producing the flavors the John distillery wants to have. Behind me is the wash still, fully made of copper. It has a capacity of 15,000 liters and it's filled up to 12,000 liters with one fermentation tank. And when you look at it, you see it has a, a reflux bowl that increases the surface area of the, the copper and the, the copper uses its catalytic reactions um, to, to make the, the whiskey better. And there's another thing, the line arm here is rising, the line arm is the very thing that's uh, up to the top that goes to the condenser and everything that condenses in the line arm goes back into the pot, touches the, the copper again and then makes the spirit even better. 
So, um, very um, unique thing here about the John Distillery is that after the condenser, you have a second cooling machine, and that cools it down to uh, 25 degrees centigrade. And we end up with a product of 15% alcohol at 20 degrees centigrade, and that goes off into the uh, spirit still. Behind me is the spirit still. The spirit still has a capacity of 9,000 liters. It's filled with 5,000 liters. Uh, most of it coming from the uh, wash still as the low wines, and some of it are the recycled faints and uh, the heads and tails from the last batch. So um, the spirit still doesn't have a reflux bowl. Um, and is a bit smaller, so the character given from the, the spirit still goes more a bit into the, the spicy direction, so it's not a, a very flat whiskey, but a, a whiskey with character, where, which has a bit more spiciness in it, so it's, um, with all the steps, we have a well-balanced whiskey. It goes up, the line arm is rising again, we have the condenser and then the second cooling system, and that gives you a good new make spirit of 63.5% that then goes into the barrel. This here is now important. This is uh, the workplace of the distiller and the master distiller. You can see here the, the, different, uh, the different funnels where all the, the spirits are put in and you can see here a lever where you turn the the heads into the heart piece and the heart piece into the tails and what is interesting is you don't see any uh, measuring equipment like you don't measure the temperature you don't measure the the alcoholic strength that's because the the John distillery uh, does it uh, with their sensory tastes uh, with a sensory, so they smell and they taste uh, the heart and the, uh, what they're currently producing, and when they say, say, yeah, this is right, then they change over to the heart piece, and this is done every single time, so um, this is really the handcraft, but also they, uh, the John Distillery has to have a lot of experience and the distillery does not work without the experience. I'm standing in one of the warehouses of the John Distillery. The John Distillery has uh, this cellar here, which is beautiful and the smell is just incredible. It just smells of, of old wood, of that mm -hmm. alcoholic whiskey smell. And the John Distillery has um, 100% ex-bourbon barrels up till now. And if I look at this barrel, you can always identify an American barrel with the rivets. It says MO, and that means this cask was made in Missouri with American white oak. And um, it's an American standard barrel, uh, 52 gallons, that's 200 liters, plus minus one. And the John Distillery then marks every barrel. And this here says P1, so they filled it the first time. Then we have um, the cask number, and this here is the date when it's called uh, when it has been filled. It's uh, 12 is December of 2013. So um, these casks uh, um, lose more um, angel share than we are used to uh, of of the Scotland because the climate is much warmer and there is more evaporation going on. Um, so you can maybe compare the, the climate more of a Kentucky summer, but they don't have a, a winter. People here say they have three seasons, hot, hot, and hotter. So um, it's very hot, but also it is very humid. While in other regions, when you have a hot climate, you lose um, the liquid inside the cask and uh, in some regions the the cask alcoholic strength rises here you have a lot of uh, water saturation in the air so it's a humid climber that means the the water cannot uh, evaporate as easily as the as the alcohol so um, here at the John distillery they also lose um, the the alcoholic strength after time so um, for the angel share it's um, first year is always a bit more, so the, 
the, the whiskey gets soaked into the staves, um, but every year they lose about 8% of their precious whiskey, but the maturation uh, is one of the parts that makes uh, the whiskey so great here. Also interesting about the uh, John distillery is how they fill their barrels. Usually the, the distilleries have the, the process of rolling the barrels around, filling them up and then rolling them to, uh, to the warehouses or using forklifts or, or any heavy kind of machinery. Um, the John distillery is a bit different. They have found a better method. They wreck their barrels and they have the tanks for their spirit, their spirit tank, and then they go around with a pump and pump the spirit into the barrels. So um, what is then also very important is that you have a peated tank and a non-peated tank. So there is no cross-contamination and you can produce a very peated edition like the bold or you can also produce unpeated editions without cross-contaminating -contam each uh, of the whiskies. And if you look in, in the background, you can al already see uh, uh, a big sherry cask and the John Distillery is exper currently experimenting with the, the sherry casks so they can in the future maybe bring out a good sherry cask edition. With Michael John, you've been f with the distillery for 24 years now and you're the master distiller, so a lot of knowledge there. Thank you for having us. Welcome. And let's try your products. What do you got for us? Okay, <clears throat> first of all, uh, Paul John is 100% Indian whiskey, mm -hmm. made out of 100% uh, Indian ingredients. We use Indian six row barley, uh, mm -hmm. which is grown in the foothills of Himalayas. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference between two row, which is generally used for scotch manufacturing is, uh, the two row is high on carbohydrate and less in protein, mm -hmm. whereas Indian barley is high in protein and less in carbohydrate. This is uh, the reason we get lesser yield out of uh, mm -hmm. every ton of barley. Mm -hmm. uh, Coming back to the tasting profile, uh, since uh, Indian barley uh, is grown in the, uh, the hotter climate, the, where the protein is high, it gives us more richer character. So we're looking at a, more of a spicy whiskey, am I right? Uh, our whiskey is uh, certain uh, you know, flavors or tasting notes are synonymous, that is our whiskies are huge on honey, vanilla, citrus, coffee mocha mm -hmm. and some of the <coughs> tropical uh, spicy uh, notes. Mm -hmm. Today we have uh, five expressions, uh, mm -hmm. three in flagships and two in select cast. Flagships are bottled at 46 percent, non chill mm -hmm. filter, no color, no flavor is added. Uh, the plus, first uh, flagship is Brilliance, which is uh, unpeated whiskey. Mm -hmm. Edited is with a hint of peat, whereas bold is completely peated. Okay. Yeah. Brilliance is very elegant, floral, easy drinkable whiskey mm -hmm. uh, because not many people like single malts uh, in India. Uh, most of the people prefer blended whiskies because that is more uh, easy, more easy drinkable, and more mellower. Uh, mm -hmm. So anybody would like to try uh, single malt for mm -hmm. them. This is the whiskey. Uh, edited is with a hint of peat. As I said, it's more traditional, more complex than the Brilliance. This is for more of a serious whiskey drinkers. Mm -hmm. Peter, of course, I mean bold, of course, it is a completely peated whiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, we import peat from Scotland, mm -hmm. two different regions. One is from Aberdeen, one is from Isla. Aberdeen peat is more of a maritime character, more mellower, whereas Isla peat is more uh, uh, <coughs> sharp, having mm -hmm. med medicinal character. So for bold, I have used uh, Isla peat, mm -hmm. whereas Editor has got uh, two uh, peats from different regions. Okay, so we start with the with the classic one. Exactly. This is uh, this is brilliant. Uh, as I said, brilliance is very uh, elegant and easy drinkable one. And as usual, it's hundred percent ex bourbon. Okay. <clears throat> Brilliance is, again, uh, it's, it's from the first and second fill casks. Mm -hmm. uh, we use 100% ex-bourbon barrels. We don't, as of now, we have not used any uh, alternative barrels such as sherry or uh, Mizunara. Mm -hmm. uh, for the Indian climate, uh, 
the bourbon or American white oak is more suitable because it is more elegant. Mm -hmm. uh, because and and another reason is uh, American oak contains less tannins, uh, which will not make whiskey astringent. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is brilliant. So forty six percent alcohol. This is forty six percent non chill filtered, no color, no flavor. Uh, in India, because of the climate, uh, whiskey matures very fast. Uh, mm -hmm. One year in India is almost uh, you know, equivalent to four years in Scotland. Mm -hmm. So this is because basically uh, the uh, when when the whiskey is in the barrel, it goes through two different phases. One is uh, extractive phase, mm -hmm. wherein the whiskey interacts with the wood and extract flavors. So this is the additive maturation. Exactly, and the uh, the uh, the second phase is reactive phase, wherein all the chemical compounds within the whiskey start reacting together. Mm -hmm. Both the phases happens at two different uh, climate or uh, temperature, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the extractive phase generally happens when the climate is very high or hot. The reactive phase generally happens when the climate is relatively cold. Mm -hmm. Since in Goa the temperature is always on a higher side, we get maximum extraction from the barrel. Mm -hmm. So this makes the whiskey very rich. Rich. Yes. Okay, so you, you don't heat up your whiskey before no. you. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, okay. on the nose it's very uh, very floral. Oh, uh, yeah. It's huge on honey, vanilla. I got the honey tropical, first. Tropical fruity notes. Mm, yeah. I have to say now, the, today it's it's really warm. Maybe in the close-up you can see that <laughs> I'm it's sweating it's a bit. Something. So you got a really... I don't know if it's whiskey or it's a temperature that you're getting a lot of smell out there. You don't have to put your nose fully in to, to experience the and whole whiskey. And also you have to remember this is bottled at 46%. Mm -hmm. Most of the uh, Scotch whiskies are bottled either at 40% or 42%, yeah. uh, which makes that whiskey, those whiskies more mellower because mm -hmm. there's more water in it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a single malt expert drink here, I guess. So, yeah, cheers. Cheers. Mm. On the palate, it's very sweet, mm -hmm. very creamy, mm. yeah, <clears throat> little metallic, because when we distilled these whiskies uh, seven years ago, the stills were relatively new. Mm -hmm. You know, it has imparted a little bit of copperish, which is giving a little bit of extra bite. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I also get a bit of. It's a little nuttier. I would have said earthy tones, but now you say nuttier now. I <laughs> taste not <laughs> some. Mm, but it's, I like it. The sweetness is very balanced with the, with the rest of the taste. Exactly. Mm. Mm. The mm. finish is again. It's it's long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a little spicy. Yeah. There is no bitter tone. A little, it, it it holds on pretty long. Um, um, I like it. So um, demand this is really whiskey, high yeah, for this whiskey. Um, um, so you're thinking about expanding, or is there any? Can you can you up the production? Is there anything yes, going exactly. on? Exactly, and we have already decided to uh, put two more pot stills. So you uh, already we are distilling three thousand liters every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so two more additional pot stills would give us three thousand extra liters of single malt, which makes it to six thousand liters every day. So you will would do the exact <coughs> pot stills, or do you? Go yeah, the, we are doing the mirror imaging. That means we we will have the replica of similar pot stills. Mm -hmm. Do you put it in this hall here or do you want to build a new we hall? Have, we have uh, space uh, beside the existing distillery. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, in, an, in another eight months time you, you would, would see additional two pot cells. Oh, that's fast. Okay, so um, the next one is the brilliance. Next one is the edited. Edited. Okay. Um, before the edited, I would like to do the select cast okay. classic. Mm -hmm. Selectas classic is uh, unpeated uh, uh, okay. whiskey. Don't spoil the unpeated with the peated. Unpeated whiskey. Again, this is chosen from the best of the casks. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, uh, this is this is from two uh, different casks. That is first and second fills. So is this like a limited edition? Can we uh, look forward to enjoying that more often or is that... Uh exactly, this is a limited edition, but uh, we, we, we will have uh, not more than 1,000 cases every year. Oh, okay, that's not, not much. Not more than 1,000 1, cases. So this whiskey, again, it's uh, 
is unpeated from the ex bourbon barrels mm -hmm. first and second fills uh, the age of the whiskey is 7 years mm -hmm. uh, brilliance was uh, elegant and floral easy drinkable one mm -hmm. uh, the classic is more complex than the first one mm -hmm. again it has got the notes of honey vanilla chocolate coffee mocha i get a bit more more of a have to say flowery note yeah. but also get a bit floral. of chocolate exactly. that's definitely a bit of mocha mm. on the palate again it's, it's very sweet very creamy mm. Mm -hmm. long salivating i have to say i would say this is a bit more <clears throat> easy oh now it comes a bit of a a glowing sensation and a bit exactly. of a bit of a peppery touch i have to say it's more spicier than the first one mhm mm i like it mm. unfortunately <coughs> these two haven't hasn't reached our market yet maybe because there are only two 1000 bottles already maybe that is the reason mm -hmm. uh, hopefully uh, the next batch uh, we will try to make it mm -hmm. little more bigger mm -hmm. so yeah that, that, no, that would be nice so um I'm seeing the normal ones, peated ones, in the middle ones. What about sherry expressions? Uh, we have a couple of uh, sherry buds which is under uh, observation. Uh, mm -hmm. Few of them are are, are very good. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have decided to add a <coughs> couple of more barrels. Mm -hmm. uh, in a, in few months' time, you should you should have. Uh, special release of sherry special release from sherry box ah okay that is cool very nice okay the next <coughs> moving on to uh, the edited 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 is with a hint of peat uh, with a hint of peat mm -hmm. do you slightly peated do you run uh, by the you, numbers like you, ppm or do you, you just talk about ppm it is not more than 10 ppm so very lightly <coughs> peated ones and you said that's more of a what do you call it not a medicinal character but, but how did you call that uh it this this uh, again uh, this is more subtle on the nose it is nothing i mean you you would not find peat at all no there's it's it's huge on uh, chocolate mint chocolate or yeah bit of chocolate yeah honey yeah bit of caramel i'd say Mm. Mm. On the palate, it is again it's sweet, mm -hmm. mm. and <clears throat> it's huge on palate. Mm -hmm. You can feel the pe peatiness. Ah, um, yeah, the peatiness is yeah like a cloud covering in your mouth, but it's exactly. very smooth. It's really smooth. Yeah. This is one of the highly highly rated whiskey we have today. This is also forty six percent. This is also forty six percent non chill filter, mm. no color, no flavor. It's doesn't feel like 46% from from the from the glow but from the from the taste there's a lot of lot going on exactly <clears throat> there's a bit of a bit of a spice thing going on so all of this keys since it is bottled uh, at 46% and non chill filtered a couple of drops of bottle uh, in water would really <clears throat> allow the you no know, whiskey to open up mhm mm um oh yeah so um goa Goa is famous for its beaches and when we go around there are tourists all around so can you visit the distillery uh, <coughs> officially we have not uh, started the, uh, the whiskey tours mm -hmm. uh, hopefully by 2017 we should we should uh, you know be ready to host uh, people for whiskey tours ah, okay. uh, because all these years we were more concentrating on the brand building and the uh, you know uh, the manufacturing Mm -hmm. uh, unless we have uh, good whiskies you know we cannot we cannot invite people to see the yeah. discovery and the manufacturing the, process the your exactly. main goal is to make good whiskey good and then whiskey. showing the people so the good whiskey so now we have we have made uh, good whiskies people have received the, these whiskies very well they have appreciated it you know we receive a lot of calls from people to come and see the distilleries mm -hmm. so we thought of you know uh, expanding our operations at the mm -hmm. same time we will have um, the visitor center and uh, other things coming up shortly it would take approximately years time mm -hmm. hopefully by 2017 we should be ready 
with uh, the ski tours. So if you fancy a nice beach holiday and uh, visit, uh, visit a distillery on the side with a really good single malt and you're already in 2017 watching this, then fly over to Goa and visit the John Paul, uh, Paul John distillery. Definitely worth a visit. I always visited earlier, I have to say. Very nice distillery. Thank you. Okay, so what else? Moving on to uh, the peated ones. Uh, as I said, we import peat from two different regions in uh, Scotland. Mm -hmm. One is from Isla and one is from Aberdeen. The bold is made out of Isla peat. Okay. It's more intense, it's more bolder. Okay, yeah. Uh, if you're interested in where the Isla peat comes from, is it from Port Allen? Uh, it's from, it's in and around Port Allen, actually. Okay, <coughs> so I've, I've made a video yep. about Port Allen. I can show you a link here. We have uh, we have very good source of uh, peat. Also, are you also running the numbers for this one? Okay, if you talk about ppm, uh, it is in between uh, 30 to 35. Mm -hmm. It is not I as intense as Isla yeah. Isla malt. Uh, the, the reason is, you know, uh, oh. we didn't want to make uh, something like Isla whiskey. So mm -hmm. We wanted to have something different. Mm -hmm. If you see, this whiskey is from the fast fill casks, uh, seven year old, uh, having uh, both the characters. It's not only about peat, it's, it is having the rich character from the barrel. Mm, okay. It's very, very robust. Uh, it's very rich, a lot of uh, tropical dry, dry fruity notes. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> it's high on, uh, you know, dark chocolate. I can already uh, smell it from here. <laughs> it's leather, you know, uh, mm -hmm. tobacco. I think this is the one that my father horsed like like that much. Yeah, <clears throat> it's very sweet on the nose. Mm -hmm. it's very but sweet. you can already have have of that a little of this this velvety velvety smoky flavor, uh, like a like a chimney, and you're sitting in your in your chair and you smell a bit of leather around and all that. Oh, that is beautiful. That is really beautiful on the nose. If you can deliver that on the tongue, that. Mm. Mm. See, Isla Peat, mm. Isla Peat has got its own distinct character. It is very intense, very sharp. Peat <coughs> overpowers all the other aromas. Wherein mm. here, here we have very balanced uh, uh, notes uh, mm -hmm. from the barrel as well as from the peat. Mm -hmm. Well integrated together. You know, it's very sweet, smooth long it's good it's uh, i like it is I, I can't believe it's 46 percent alcohol it's very subtle on your tongue and you have that smoke that that comes on strong and fades out the, mm, with, with chocolate notes and as you said a bit of leather notes i think we should compare this with uh, the other peat <clears throat> again select cast peat mm -hmm. is something similar to classic but classic is unpeated whiskey this is completely 100 percent peat 100% peat. 100% peat. And again, from the first fill uh, casks. Mm -hmm. Select cask uh, cla uh, peated uh, is... So uh, who, does, who does the cask selection? I, I uh, personally visit the cooperages. I personally visit uh, different distilleries in the US. Mm -hmm. we inspect the barrels, uh, then uh, import. Mm -hmm. Those barrels. And and what what else I wanted to ask you is uh so you you run uh, all the sh uh, the batches from the stills. Exactly. You see, <coughs> currently we are having very small operations. Uh, we do three shifts. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, I am uh, uh, I'm here at the distilleries. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, doing the cuts. We are we are fortunately we are allowed to keep the spirit safes open, mm -hmm. uh, so that each and every cut we do by sensory we mm -hmm. taste the whiskey we smell it uh, we do the visuals and then we do the fractions so it must be a really interesting job to to see you can you can just change uh, the the spirit to, exactly. to what you want to do and Each choose and the barrels batch. and then have them mature and try to bring out a product that yeah, since we are we are having a small operation everything is possible mm -hmm. but once we grow uh, once we you know uh, step up the production then we would require already we have we have good talented youngsters you know, mm -hmm. under me working here so you already, already have already, apprentices yes, and, exactly ah, okay they're already very well trained mm -hmm. to handle the distillation and the other processes 
Mm -hmm. That's it. Good. So, so this is like. Uh, this is again uh, bottled at 55 percent. Oh, 55. Cast strength. Mm -hmm. uh, this is 100 percent peated whiskey. If we talk about PPM, it is in between again 30 to 35. Mm -hmm. uh, has got two different peaks in this: peat from Isla and Aberdeen. Ah, okay. This is cool to see a mixture. Again, on the nose, the peat is like not other that intense. Other PT whiskies. Hmm. This is. Hmm. This is more richer. Hmm. Doesn't <coughs> come on that strong, yeah. but it builds up. Uh, oh. huge, yeah. You have a glowing sensation. With this is very salivating. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, oh, really like that. Mm, have to really look look out for that one. Mm -hmm. So, oh, great whiskies you have here. So, I think this is the end of our tour now. Thank you very much for having us. Pleasure having you. Uh, and it was a pleasure being here. So, um, if you ever happen to be in the the Goa region, this is a must visit. And yeah, thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting then please feel free to share this video with your friends or any, uh, on Facebook or anywhere else you like.